No, but he's six and one. In fact, both these guys are six and one here tonight. And he'll be taking on Troy Green. His last win, Uriah Faber, came back in March of this year. He picked up an arm triangle choke in round one, 152. And that was uh, picking up his sixth win of his career. Before that, he beat Jeffrey Craig, William Gibson, Kevin Crane. Four fight win streak. And he's won six of his last seven, Uriah. Yeah, and he has a loss here against Richie Lewis. Richie Lewis, I believe, is uh, is a high, high level wrestler. I think he took the uh, second, <clears throat> in the, or took took the championship at University Nationals, a tournament that I wrestled in back in the day. Uh, UC Davis. Well, when I was at UC Davis, yep. yeah, Richie's out of he's out of Oklahoma. So okay, I can't remember. that's but, a good wrestling camp. But uh, Ernesto, obviously. With that blemish, that's not a, a, a blemish that you have to be uh, ashamed of by any means. I think that's, is that Ryan Couture in his corner? Yes. Ryan Couture, I've known that guy for such a long time, such a good friend to his dad. And, and uh, You knew I him remember, so well you had to ask me if it was him. I was making sure, yeah. <laughs> hey, but the, the thing is with, with Ryan is uh, I remember him getting kind of a late start in his career and having a, a career that, that was all about hard work, effort, and energy. And that's the kind of coach you like to have in your corner. Someone that has been there through the thick and thin of, a, of their own career now can give his lessons to them. And you talk about a guy who is an amazing fighter. We talked about him being 6-1 and one with that one blemish against Richie Lewis, the, the, the wrestler. But he's 10-1 and one in his career. He went undefeated as an amateur. This guy's only lost. 71 for Ernesto Rodriguez, just 0.2 pounds separates the weights. 5'10, two inches shorter than his opponent, Troy Green. Here tonight, welterweights on display. Garrett Fertig. Let's go. At 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing 171 pounds even. Currently on a four-fight win streak, including a first round submission victory. He brings a professional record of six wins, one defeat. Tonight he makes his A1 combat debut, representing Extreme Couture. And one kick Jim, originally from Havana, Cuba. He now makes his home in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ernesto Starboy Rodriguez. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the Legacy Farms Red Corner. At six feet tall, weighing 170.8 pounds. After capturing the A1 Combat Middleweight Championship. He moves down to welterweight. His record stands at six wins, one defeat. The number six ranked welterweight represents Team Santos and fights out of San Francisco, California. Troy, the Ghost Green. The referee, Ed Kalante. Troy Green currently ranked number three pro middleweight in New Jersey, number 70 overall in the United States, and number 13 in the U.S. Northeast. Steps into the cage here tonight. The Ghost will take on Ernesto Rodriguez right here at Uriah Faber's A1 Combat 12. Ed Kalantis will get this party started. Both these guys have some ob obvious gifts as athletes. I mean, they're both lean. They're both explosive, uh, durable. Both these guys are UFC ready, Uriah. Well, uh, they, they look the part. They've uh, they've been fighting tough guys. You know, like I said, the, neither guy is backing down to anybody, and that's kind of the mentality you need when you're when you're looking to be at the big shows. White trunks belong to Ernesto Rodriguez. Black trunks to Troy Green. Ernesto Rodriguez, for his part, number five in Nevada, ranked pro welterweights, number 35 in the U.S. West, and number 132 in the United States. Troy Green, of course, number six in the A1 Combat <laughs> rankings. And Troy's already moving backwards a little bit. I don't know. Um, yeah, and I don't think he got hit, or at least not that I saw you, Ryan. No, he's just he's just comfortable getting moved back a little bit. I think it's probably uh, uh, just a feeling out process. <laughs> Troy Green's in shape. I mean, both these guys are in shape, but Troy Green really in shape. For nice, nice punch to an entry on a shot on the single leg, and Troy's doing a good job of defending it. And he's going to have some more speed at this weight, Uriah, dropping the 15 pounds. Yeah, no, I experienced that when I went from 45 to 50, 35. And, you know, again, Troy did a great job of defending, and it's a great attack by Rodriguez. We saw Troy, you know, do well against Ryan Loder, that was a Division One wrestler, so that, that already tells me that this guy's been doing his homework when it comes to defending shots. And right now, Troy Green up against the cage in a rear waist lock for Ernesto Rodriguez looking for a takedown. Troy will turn into him, and he'll get 
take him down anyway, and it looks like he's going to finish it as he traps both legs of Troy Green. Troy will look to get right back to his feet, and that is a sign of a veteran right there. No, Troy's doing a great job. I mean, all you can really do is, is field the takedown and, and keep fighting until uh, you're either having to get off the bottom or you've escaped. So um, Rodriguez is the aggressor here, so it's it's his points being scored, really, but, but Green is just one little moment away from, from turning the ties if he can get away. Right, he definitely didn't finish the takedown, which, uh, as you guys know, once you get taken down, you got to kind of hold him down there for a little bit to get credit for that takedown. But I see the wrestling, though, of Rodriguez, and now I want to go back and watch that fight with your friend Richie and see how good that fight was because both these guys look like they can wrestle, as you talked about uh, yeah. Richie. Yeah, yeah, and, um, you know, if you, when superpowers cancel each other out, right. the, the fight usually takes a different uh, a different turn of events. Right now, he's got the first takedown. He's got a sure. kind of like a cradle situation. Yeah. He's dropping some small elbows on, on Troy. And I wonder how Troy's feeling being lighter. You know, some guys respond well to going down on the weight, and some people, it's a taxing, uh, a taxing task, and it affects you in the fight. And it's a turn, I mean, and it's a trade-off, right? You're right, because we talked about he'll be a little bit lighter and a little bit faster, but he's also going to be less strong. He's not going to be nearly as strong as he would be at 185 pounds. And I'll yeah. tell you what, this guy looks every, I'm talking about Ernesto Rodriguez now, looks every bit of 170. I mean, he looks strong and thick. No, yeah, these guys are, these guys are both big for the weight class. Now it's right in front of us, see the action, some good little scrambles. <clears throat> Troy Green is going to have to figure out how to solve the riddle of Ernesto Rodriguez's wrestling. He's looking for a Kimura here, at least look like he might be there for a second, Uriah. He was trying to do a switch, but it wasn't a great position for that. And then you can threaten a Kimura. Now he's doing the right thing, he's fighting hands. And Ernesto's doing the right, uh, the right thing here, he's just pressuring. The pressure with his shoulder, it all comes from his feet to get into the mat there. And he's just basically pinning him, trying to get hip control. Once he gets the hip control, he can do a lift or, or adjust to a double, goes to the back leg. And I like how Ernesto reached behind instead of in front. You know, you have to... Uh, He's gonna pull that left leg out now, too. Yeah. You I'll have to you understand, hand, hand fighting in these situations is so important. Chess match. And it's I'll tell you what, hand the crowd's a little quiet, Uriah. There's nothing wrong with this fight. As we said, it's a chess match, the hand fighting. But they just got... They just watched Billy Brand and, and then all these knockouts, Carlos Figueroa, and they want to see some hands, so they're not ready for this yet. You see the kid <laughs> yawning in the background right there. He's he's tired of it already. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's past his, his, uh, his, his bedtime. bedtime. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is a great fight. I mean, you just got there's different aspects to this mixed martial arts game. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, we're going to get out of this one round, and it's very obvious Choi lost this round. So his, his thing is going to come out the next round, take the lesson. <laughs> Don't let that happen to me again. Let me let me ask you a question. There wasn't a lot of damage done. Is this a 10-8 round? He was on top the entire time. I don't know what the judges are thinking these days. Um, Could be. I would. I mean, it was definitely one-sided. I, I don't know if I would say 10-8. 10-8. I usually think there's a, a knockdown or a big cut or a ser like some serious attempts on submissions. It's definitely a 10-9. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Ernesto Rodriguez did plenty to win this first round. And again, uh, Troy Green now taking damage from the top, and that may make it a 10-8 round. I would, I'm interested to see Uriah, because he really, I mean, at no point did Troy Green offer any offense, just some defense and some switches. Yeah, it could be. And, and honestly, cutting down to 170 for the first time and then going through that kind of grind, grind, um, it's not a good combination, but well, let's see what happens. Rodriguez is breathing, but he's, he should be prepared for that. Let's take a look at the replay. And here we go. And we're going to see a lot of uh, Ernesto Rodriguez looking for a takedown. It's and Troy a classic trying to pop back up. single leg dump. Uh, and Troy's trying to get his, his hips off the ground. Goes right into kind of a cradle situation. It's a classic wrestling pinning move. Drops a couple little elbows, and, and Troy keeps working up. I mean, this is kind of the tail of this first round. What does Troy need to do in round number two? Obviously, he needs to keep some distance and, and stop that takedown, maybe some sprawls. But how does he do that? Well... You have to, in my opinion, you take a back step with your back foot and you have your weight forward. It's, it's kind of a, a unique MMA style of stance, but he needs to be able to fight backwards without without giving up the, uh, the weight on his feet. The center of gravity? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's see what he does. Maybe that's why he was backing up in that first round, right? He was expecting those takedown attempts. Yeah, seems like it. <laughs> yep, there he goes again. It's the same plan. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. I've never had a Coke my whole life. Really? Nope. Pepsi? 
I don't think it's not that I can remember. No soda? No, I've had soda and root okay. beer. And soda. Root beer. Root beer. You look Hansons. like a root beer drinker. Hansons. <laughs> you look like a little kid that would be sitting around drinking a root beer. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. There we go. Now this is, uh, again, not looking good for Troy. When a guy gets you down that easy and you had a tough first round, it's going to be a, a mental, a, a hard mental battle that's just to do it all over again for another five minutes. <laughs> and he's ex, ex, like completely extended. The worst position you could be in for a fight is to be completely extended. Meaning You're Troy free. Green on the bottom with his yes. legs straight out. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to be, you know, extension is a loss of power. Uh, all your defense goes away. You're getting, you know, getting weaker. Now we've got a, a, a Kimura, top Kimura here. Elbow's going up. Looking for it. I don't think that's in. The last thing Troy needed to do, though, was try to fight off a sub as well. Well, this doesn't feel good, but it's not. Well, maybe it's a not paint a damn brush. Thing. Yeah. Right hand on the way out. So what Troy needs to do is he needs to get his body all on one side. He can't be have his feet on one side, his head and his arms on the other side. He needs to get an underhook. He needs to get a shin guard, but keep his body on one side. Or there's a guy named Stephen Abbas. There's an Abbas roll. Um, if he knows that, you could go underneath and start trying to trying to fish uh, underneath the guy's legs and get around the hips. But he's doing neither. He's extended. Legs on one side, head on the other. This is a, 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 a no advance stage for, for Troy Green at this point. Yeah, and he's and this one definitely, I mean, this is feeling like a really lopsided fight. And that's crazy because Troy Green, as we said, six and one. He's won here before. But like you said, Uriah, we have no idea how this weight cut from 185 down to welterweight affected him, although we're seeing a little bit of the of the damage here. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, you have to give credit to Ernesto because right. Ernesto's implementing an, an amazing game plan. And, and um, you know, he's he's wrestled with guys Ernesto has with like Richie Lewis and, and um, you know we have Ryan Loader that went with Troy Green and was was having trouble you know getting him down at 185 pounds. So that's the one thing you can say if you're gonna make a comparison, you can say okay, you know both high level wrestlers and Troy has definitely cut some weight. So I would say maybe it is the weight that's that's, that's making him a little more fatigued. Right. Because we we have not seen him get manhandled like this as of yet, Uriah. And that's exactly what's happening right now from Ernesto Rodriguez, star boy. I mean, look at look at Troy's extension. <laughs> and he's yeah. not even really fighting to get to get back to position. Your eyes just sort of laying there. Well, you have to know how. That's the problem. So, um, I you know, honestly, when I think of Song Yudong when he first came to our gym seven years ago, um, one of the things he was having trouble with was, was was understanding what to do. It's not a mindset. A lot of times, so you got to know the right technique to add the mindset. So, you know, at this point, Song's one of the hardest guys to hold down in the, in the room and in the world. Uh, but you have to learn those right techniques, and, and um, he's doing a lot of things wrong here. And Rodriguez is doing a lot of things right. Big learning experience for Troy Green, <laughs> right? Who, unless something changes here, oh, he's looking for a, maybe a head and arm here, arm triangle. Yeah, he's got a he's got a uh, head and arm choke, but it's not in. Rodriguez, I think. What Rodriguez can take from this is, I would be more uh, submission mindset. Because you're already dominating on top. Yeah, you're six and one, and, yeah. and, and a lot of guys uh, I've, I've throughout throughout time on our team have had like really strong wrestling pedigrees and been able to hold guys down. But actually, isolating in what I call a, a checkmate, where you can hold the guy down and just blast punches and, and, or elbows until they're out, or a submission. That's that's how you get out of there. And, you know, submissions was my way. I, I was like, let me get in, get my check, get out. I think I had 17 submissions, and, and I had to put a lot of time to, to make the switch from just a wrestler to be a jiu-jitsu player on, on top of it. Yeah, and it's all, it's all a learning curve and a learning experience, as you said, Uriah. And both these guys, as you said, will have something to work on when they leave here tonight. Troy needs to figure out, though, a different gear going into this third and final round. Tro Troy's got his head on the mat. He's got his back on the mat. He's got his legs extended. He needs to create some sort of curvature in his body, get underhooks, get butterflies, uh, butterfly guard. He has to do something. And I feel like he's he, he, he looks pretty defeated at this point. 
Let's take a look at the replay. These highlights. You want to call these highlights? Let's call them highlights. All right, here we go. Boom! Boom. Big takedown. <laughs> Pow! <laughs> and the guillotine attempt. Whoa! It's crazy. Guillotine attempt. Uh, extension right off the bat. You can use bending your knees to get some motion going. You can use underhooks and, and just doing a big sit-up to get some curvature. Okay. And, and you've got to start rocking and moving the guy. You're in a bad place when your legs are on one side of the guy's body and your head's on the other side. Yeah. You gotta know that you gotta you gotta know the right moves to do this to get out of here. Um, yeah. And he's just not doing it. In between rounds, we'll send a shout out to Kudo Protein Pot for Kudo Snacks on Instagram, who sponsored tonight's event. And this stuff is really good. Uriah Faber's been down in it the That's entire right. time. True Sports Cards as well sponsoring tonight's event, and Legacy Farms always sponsors here tonight. Don't forget about lockstep arms. Lockstep arms. Some real gun ammo. We got everything you need from lockstep arms. Cali Asai. Cali Asai. Who owns that company? The best. And my daughter, Cali. <laughs> She's the boss. I you know what? I believe that, you're right, Faber. <laughs> you, you should. It's true, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Third and final round, and Troy Green is going to have to do something. He needs big. a lot of fire. He needs yeah. to get pissed off. He needs to think he's in a street fight. Someone's back talking his mom slapped his girlfriend on the butt he needs he needs a fire <laughs> someone slapped the beard you know wow he's having a bad him in the day. face i mean that's what you gotta you gotta make this a fight Ooh, big right hand looked like it actually hurt troy green on the entry there even though it looked like it was just used for a takedown attempt it actually landed clean double wow, ankle pick right there. there you know for rodriguez I, I haven't this is my first fight that i've actually really been here for and, and, and seen what do you think of this style close. His style is not bad, but I, I, I'm talking all the time to matchmakers of 1FC, and I'm talking to the UFC, and um, like this kind of style, they basically say to me, uh, he's not a guy for contender. Right. You know, if he gets to like 11 or 1, and he's beat some guys that are on the horizon, and then they can say, well, maybe he's a guy that will put in straight into the UFC, but he's got to be able to finish these guys. I mean, at this point... Troy's been doing some things wrong, and, and Rodriguez is doing a great job of dominating, but right. um, both these guys need to make this a fight, like a fight. Right. And when you're, when you're talking urgency. about that, you're right, when you're talking to Sean Shelby and the guys over at UFC and all that, they're not saying he's not a great fighter, because he is. They're saying this isn't exactly what people want to watch on TV on Contender Series. Well, you know, it, this and it may, matters. I mean, this could be just a pure game plan because uh, this guy might come out against somebody else and do something completely and, different. And do something completely different. So he, he's fighting really smart. He's got great coaches. He's got intelligent coaches. The crowd uh, doesn't like it. The crowd's booing, but you know what? If you're beating a guy up, doing one thing, why change it? You know, he's he's gonna get his. They're restless. The natives are restless. Uriah Faber in nine one six. And these guys, uh, they like these scraps. Guys, don't forget, coming up in just a couple weeks, September 4th, I'm sorry, September 3rd, we will be at Tachi Palace Casino Resort for Uriah Faber's A1 Combat 13. And following that, we head down to Southern California to the Commerce Casino for Uriah Faber's A1 Combat 14. All those tickets will go on sale on Eventbrite. And in fact, Tachi Palace is on sale as we speak. Also, A1 Combat Muay Thai returns September 9th, doing everything big here in combat sports at Uriah Faber's A1 Combat. Tom Anderson and, of course, the California Kid bringing you the best in combat sports in California. Do they get a, they're going to get a uh, special. If he finishes on the Kudo Popcorn Bag, the Ooh. UFC Kudo Popcorn Protein Popcorn Bag, we got to give him some. we got to get I'll yeah, talk to Ryan Lewis, the, the CEO. If, he, if someone gets a, a nasty highlight <laughs> real kudo popcorn finish on the popcorn logo, we got to send him a, a month's supply of, of uh, the kettle kettle pop or maybe the... I see, Troy hears you, though. He doesn't want him having pop. any popcorn. He's sliding off yeah, of there. Yeah, he's like, nah. How, many, how much he's of like, his body I, has I've given enough in this fight. <laughs> I'm not giving him popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got enough protein. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm not, I'm not about to give him that popcorn. <laughs> oh man, Troy Green might need some popcorn after this fight. Yeah. I love Troy, man. He's a great guy. Always fun to deal with during these fights. There you see the Lockstep Arms logo, and the FGA, and all, all the Lockstep Arms. Really, I love those guys. Those guys are. Uh, I feel uh, Heath. Big time backers, backers of our, of our program, man. We love you. Yeah, absolutely. Phil you know, Heath. And right now, it is just kind of what we've been seeing the entire fight. Rodriguez content to stay on top and do right. minimal work as far as striking goes. But he's yeah. doing, listen, it's not easy to hold a, I mean, a big man down like that. Well, this looks 
like it's not that difficult either. I mean, I mean you're right. honest, you're right. at this moment, yeah. you know what I mean? We, we got to be. We, no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like, but I feel like he needs to do more. He needs to find that submission. He needs to find some nasty elbows. I mean, and real if quick, it keeps guys, on like this, we're going to have to hear about your bodybuilding career. Nobody wants that. Everybody. What about my powerlifting <laughs> career? I just won the National Power. Bench Press Championship. You got to give me some For love, what age Uriah. Group? What age group? You don't need to know how old I am. Listen, we're the same age. <laughs> Oh, uh, man, I, uh, I, I'm I sorry, man. <laughs> I, uh, earlier I said that there's no other kind of TKO than by strikes. Garrett Fertig has okay. schooled me a little bit. Uh, he said it was a TKO via verbal tap. So there, I learned something new from the voice of A1 Combat. Your, okay, uh, now Garrett we're seeing it from Rodriguez. Yes, now he's throwing some punches. But he can't, he can't stop seconds. there. He's got to go, man. I mean, you saw from Billy. Billy had a, a, a pretty decisive win, and he made a statement at the end. You know, that, that, that's what we have to do here. Um, I... I think Rodriguez is uh, obviously a dominant, a dominant fighter. But right. this crowd, though, is going to want to see some action in this in this girls' fight coming up next. Women's fight. I'm sorry, I don't mean to say girls. Taylor Malden will take on Laura Anderson for the first ever Uriah Faber's A1 Combat Strawweight Women's Championship, and that is Corey McKenna's wheelhouse uh, strawweight. Oh yeah, Corey's the master. She's looking good today doing her interview. This is the first time we've had her in ring. She's done a great job, even when people don't. Give an interview, she gives an interview. That's impressive. <laughs> she did it for him. Thanks to Garrett Furtick, by the way, for letting me know that. I was curious about that. So I appreciate that from Garrett. And that will end this fight. And I don't think, listen, we've said before that we don't want to pick winners, but I think we'll be okay on this one, Ryan. I'm going to go with Ernesto Rodriguez. You know, the crowd won on this one. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd oh, won on this one. It's a good thing you can't be fired. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the crowd won. Oh, man. Guys, <laughs> this has been a great night of fights so far. We crowned our first AMI champion coming up next. We are going to crown our first ever women's strawweight champion. In fact, our first ever women's champion in A1 combat. As Frank Trigg walks by with the manly beard, Uriah Faber. Yeah. And I get a, I get a little massage right there. I don't know how manly yeah. he is. Well, he, well that, hey, he, he's, he knows... He knows who the man is, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right, you're so short. All right, guys. We're gonna we're gonna get the official decision here in a second. Oh man. Big shout out to Brian Pritchard who runs the cage here at at A1 Combat, keeping everything in line, let's, organizing everything down here, and now let's let's replay. Here we go with the replays. Boom! <laughs> Put us back to the mat. Oh man, you're Pow. Right. I don't know, man. I'm staying there it out is. of this. Right out here. Of this. Now those are good elbows. Yep. Those are good elbows. You're not dragging me down with you. All right. He, he, he still he needs to drag him on the Kudo Popcorn logo and, we'll, and get Ryan to send him out of box. Troy's like, no popcorn for my man. Nope. Oh my god. I mean, honestly, guys, it was a dominant, dominant performance. Yes. Um, I feel like Troy took a back seat after the first round and. and, and you know, I, maybe this is something he struggles with. You know, when momentum isn't on your side, uh, you know, you gotta find you gotta find some new momentum. You know? Yeah, you gotta find a new motivation and um, a new game plan. And, and he wasn't able to pull that off today. And congrats to Ernesto. Yep. Again, he did his job today. He he, he was dominant. He he was tactical. He was, um, you know, he showed his prowess. And, and I know he's got he's got some other I tools like, in, the, in, the, in the I like that you mocked bag. him for like five minutes and now you're trying to talk I'm about it. I was talking about it was it, the fight was what it was, you know. By the, the way, man, you're dressed up it. tonight. I'm proud of you. You look great. You actually yeah. look great. Yeah, you okay. say I'm the fashion police, but actually, man, you look really great tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm super well, proud to be sitting next to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> By the way, guys, I, I, was I gonna, looked good last time, too. I'm just saying. Enough popcorn, Uriah. You don't need any more protein. <laughs> I was going to tell you guys, Brian Pritchard is also the man behind um, A1 Combat Apparel. Make sure you check them out on Instagram. Pick up a, a shirt and a hat. Garrett Fertig, let's get the official announcement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action in the A1 cage, we go to your three judges at cage side for the decision. Your judges, Brandon Salcedo and Elliot Kelly, both see the contest 30-25, while Judge Wade Vieira sees the contest 30-26. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Ernesto Starboy Rodriguez. So we got our question answered. Two of the judges gave him two 10-8 rounds. One of the judges, Wade Vieira, who's a Caesar Gracie black belt, gave him one 10-8 round, which is weird because he's the grappler.
so you, you would think that he would want to go more toward the 10-8 round, but actually the grappler, the really established grappler, he's also a uh, Taekwondo guy, but the established grappler decided to only give him one 10-8 round. Well, he probably was hoping for a submission. Let's send it up to Corey McKenna, who's with our winner, Ernesto Rodriguez. Okay, I'm here with your winner, Ernesto Rodriguez. Okay, so first things first, you said about having a full camp coming in here. Do you feel like that really paid off and that's what helps you get the win here tonight? Yeah, absolutely. The had a full camp give you a lot of benefit. Like, cardio will be ready for dominating all three rounds if the guy doesn't break up like Troy. He show very toughness. But uh, like I say, when I have a full camp, I'm a whole other level. A very grappling-centric uh, game plan coming in here tonight. Was that something you worked specifically in your training camp? Uh, was that like a hole you saw in his performance? Obviously, a very dominant performance. Um, was that a plan coming in here? I, t I trained the whole package, stand up, jiu-jitsu, and wrestling. But the grappling is my, is my main martial art. When I put it on the cage, no, nobody on this world can stop me. Yeah, it was a very dominant performance in here, like you say. It's, uh, Exactly what you said. So, uh, is there anyone else you'd like to fight uh, to, to thank tonight? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I want to thank my coach, One Kick Nick. My stand up have got to another level with him, Ryan Couture. Ryan Couture, right here. He's the man behind my grappling. So, big thanks to him, all my coaches and training partners, my girlfriend. She's a big support in my career. And uh, I want to thank Uriah Favor to let me fight in his show. I hope you told Dana I'm ready. Uh, one last thing, uh, you know, your opponent was ranked number six in the A1 rankings. Um, that's five wins on a bounce for you. Do you have any thoughts about what you want moving forwards? Yeah, I want to get my, my spot to Dana White Contender Series or straight up to UFC. Jack Madalena, he, he, he downed me down. I was supposed to fight him last weekend. He said no because I had a full camp. So I hope I can find him one day. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You. Back to you, Jim and Uriah. All right. So you heard it. He said, if I have a full camp, I'm, I'm unstoppable. He also said that when he grapples, which is his main martial art, that nobody in the world can stop him, Uriah Faber. Well, he proved that today. I mean, definitely did not get stopped in the least bit. And, and unfortunately for Troy, uh, he was dominating for three rounds.